So in this vision, uh, video, we're going to continue talking about how we can manipulate power series. So let's talk about multiplication and division of power series. In elementary school, we applied the distributive, associative, and commutative properties of addition and of multiplication of real numbers to develop basic algorithms for multiplication and division of multi-digit numbers. You might know these as, as uh, long multiplication and long division, or just, just division and multiplication the algorithms that you learned in elementary school. And these algorithms are essentially the same algorithms used to multiply and divide polynomials in high school, Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. And these same algorithms can again be applied to find uh, the first several terms of power series uh, for the product of uh, two functions uh, or quotient. Okay. Okay, so the known power series for e to the x and sine x can be used to find the first four non-zero terms of e to the x times sine of x for the power series for it. And then we can also use Taylor's theorem directly to verify we did it correctly. So let's work this out. So here's the series on the left for e to the x. Remember, it's 1 over k factorial times x to the k. Or in other words, 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared plus 1 6 x cubed plus 1 24th x to the fourth plus, and it keeps going on to higher power terms. Sine x has a similar series, but it's only the odd power terms. So it's uh, x minus 1 6 x cubed plus 1 over 120 x to the fifth minus 1 over 5040 x to the seventh. So that 5040, remember that's 7 factorial, that's 5 factorial there, 3 factorial there, 2 factorial. 3 factorial and 4 factorial for all those little denominators. So if we want to find a series for e to the x times sine x, we can just multiply these two series. So I'm going to write them out just like we would a multi-digit number in elementary school or a polynomial in, in, uh, in high school algebra and write this as 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared plus 1 6 x cubed plus 1 24th x to the fourth plus and the dot 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 means all of those terms from x to the fifth up forever. That's for e to the x. And the sine of x then is x minus 1 6 x cubed plus 1 over 120 x to the fifth minus 1 over 5040 x to the seventh. Uh, again, plus dot, dot, dot. Again, that dot, dot, dot means higher power terms. Now you just multiply essentially using the distributive property. x times each term up here gives you, well, it gives you x. All the powers go up one. x plus x squared, minus, plus 1 half x cubed, plus 1 6 x to the fourth, plus 1 24th x to the fourth, uh, x to the fifth, plus some other terms that are at least power 6 or higher. Now if we multiply by 1 6 x cubed, we multiply by it by each term, and I only need to really keep up with the first, with the terms up to x to the fifth, which will end up with uh, That'll end up with uh, uh, four or five terms here at least that are uh, um, non-zero. Okay, so if I do one sixth x cubed times one, that's one sixth x cubed. I'm aligned it a, a negative. I'm going to line that up to the x cubes. Negative one sixth x cubed times x is negative one sixth x to the fourth. I'm going to line that up to the x to the fourths. Negative one sixth x cubed times one half x to the second, that's going to be an x to the fifth, so it's going to be under there. One half times negative one six is negative one twelfth. And then we get higher terms. If I take one twentieth x to the fifth times one, I get one twentieth x to the fifth, and one twentieth times the rest is going to give me powers bigger than uh, six or bigger. And if I take this x to the seventh times things up here, I'm going to get terms bigger than x to the fifth and so forth. So even though this goes on infinitely many times, we can't really multiply it all out. We can multiply the first part of it out and see what the first several terms are. And so if we add these together, we get x, x squared. Uh, here we have to get a common denominator of 6. So this is 3, 6 minus 1, 6 is 2, 6, which is 1 third x cubed. Uh, the x to the fourths cancel out, so we don't have anything there because we didn't have a, a constant term either, zero there. And here we have to get a common denominator of 120 for the x to the fifth term. So let's see, we multiply top and bottom by 5 here, so that's 5 over 120 
my multiply top and bottom by 10 here. So 5 over 120 minus 10 over 120 is uh, negative 5 over 120. Um, wait a minute, let me do this again. 5 minus 10 is negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4 over 120, and that reduces to negative 1 over 30. Actually, I've got it all written out down here. Okay, so the fraction arithmetic is written out right down there for you. And uh, that yeah, gets that. And that's the first four terms that are not zero. There's a zero term for the constant term. And the fourth term, which is why we had to go all the way up to the fifth instead of only stopping at the third power, which potentially could have been four non-zero terms. But there was no, no, uh, there was a zero term for the constant and there was zero term for the fourth. So we had to go up to five, five. Now there's more to this, right? It goes on forever, but the rest of it is bigger terms. And our, our goal was just to figure out the first part of it. So this can be a little tedious to work out, but at least it can be worked out. And it's not, not terribly bad to do this. Uh, and uh, it's not clear at all what this dot, dot, dot is going to be here because it's a little hard to figure out what kind of pattern we have, how to generalize this. Uh, but at least we could follow this process and work out as many terms as we want to. We could have also, of course, worked this out with Taylor's theorem directly. Here I'm going to use the calculator to compute the derivatives for me. So our function was e to the x times sine of x. The first derivative is e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x. I would probably write that as e to the x times cosine x plus sine x in factored form. Take a derivative of that, you get 2 e to the x cosine x. Derivative of that is 2 e to the x cosine x minus 2 e to the x sine x. Take another derivative that's negative 4 e to the x sine x. Another derivative is here, another derivative, another derivative, and another derivative. So this is the function first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth derivatives. And I have, well, I have it written out here through five. I didn't, I didn't, I did a little overkill up here. So here they are written out through five derivatives. Plug in zero, sine of zero is zero, either zero is one, so that's zero. Uh, sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one, so this is one times e to the zero is one, that's one. Plug in zero here, that's cosine of zero is one, e to the zero is one, so one times one times two is two. Here, sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one, so that's one times e to the zero, that's another one, times the two is two. Sine of zero is zero, so that term is zero. And here, again, sine of 0 is 0, so you get cosine of 0 is 1, e to the 0 is 1, so you get negative 4 there. And, of course, these, I could have found those derivatives by hand, but I, uh, you know, cheated a little bit or whatever. I used to, got a little lazy, did a calculator calculation there. But you could verify those by doing them by hand. All right, now we take these. Here's n factorial, 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial, 5 factorial. And we divide the f, the nth derivative by n factorial. 0 divided by 1 is 0. 1 divided by 1 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 6 is 1 third. 0 divided by 24 is 0. Negative 4 divided by 120 is negative 130. And so we get 0 plus 1x plus 1x squared plus 1 third x cubed plus 0x to the fourth minus 1 thirtieth x to the fifth. And that's the same thing that we got before. So so it should convince you this is going to work out. Uh, you can tell me which one of those ways you thought was easiest. Um, of course, here I did a lot of the work on a calculator, but how, well, how much work would it have taken to work out the, uh, you know, the original function, then the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth derivatives? We needed that much worked out. So anyway, that's the first. Uh, that's the, well, at least the fifth degree Taylor polynomial for that, centered at zero. And then the dot, dot, dot is the rest of it, but it's not clear how that generalizes necessarily. Since the this function was, um, the series that we started with were good for all real numbers, for sine x and e to the x, this is also going to be good for all real numbers.